thank you for coming, or at least being in this room already. You're really helping my numbers. Hopefully you find what I'm about to talk about kind of interesting, you want to join in too. Um, for those who actually are here because they know of the Schemaverse tournament, also welcome, and uh, hopefully it's going to be a good time. Welcome, pizza, please enjoy. There's lots. So um, what the Schemaverse is, if you haven't found out, is a game that I've developed directly inside the Postgres database. So everything about the game is done using SQL commands, and it's all using features within Postgres, like views, triggers, rules, basically any, any little thing that I could use security-wise to kind of build a game and enforce rules I used in this game. So Josh Burkus came to me and said, I want to bring a tournament of the game to the conference, so that's why we're here. For the next roughly 24 hours, I'm going to start an instance of the tournament, and everyone has a chance to connect to it and actually go and, and play and issue commands and compete for some pretty cool prizes as well. So I'll, I'll start getting into more specific, specifics of the game in a bit. Let's go over my huge slide deck here. Uh, if I bore you, I, I apologize, just eat more pizza. So first of all, I have to thank these people, um, mostly PGCon, for bringing me here to, to do this, because it's pretty awesome. It's just a game that I wrote, and now I get to come share it with a bunch of people who love Postgres as much as I do. Postgres experts also have a hand in the pizza on the table, so they are definitely one to thank. There's also been a lot of prizes supplied by them, so I, I owe them a big thank you. Um, Navicat, for some reason, like my game quite a bit, and they tend to support me. They, they also gave a prize for the DEF CON tournament that there was last year. Um, and InfoBunker is my host currently. Uh, they give me a, a server to host the databases on for absolutely no reason, and I'll <coughs> never know why, um, because they usually don't want press. Um, but fun little thing, it's a, it's a data center that's actually in a bunker. I, I thought that's pretty cool. So anyways, those are my sponsors, and they're awesome, as I said. So the important part about the tournament, what are you actually competing for? And I don't mean, how do you win the game yet? Sorry. But what is there for prizes? First prize, there's going to be a championship hoodie, which seems super cool. I'm really excited to see it. I haven't actually seen it. But I know my designer did a really good job on the actual graphics. So I assume it translated well into sweater. I don't know what size it is yet. But <laughs> hopefully, hopefully it works out. Um, First place will also receive a signed 9.2 poster, which is kind of exciting as well. Um, the next prize is for best hack. Because I've developed this game in a database, I've put a lot of time and effort into creating a lot of, as I said, rules, triggers, functions, anything and everything to, to keep the user at bay and only do certain things. But of course, everyone makes mistakes. If you can break out of anything, SQL injections come to mind and I think what you've done is fairly cool, then you have a chance at winning a license of Navicat for Postgres, which is really nice software. As far as database clients go, I've used it quite a bit. Um, Crash is less than most. We're also giving away a Postgres 9.2 t-shirt with that award. If for some reason there's no great hack, then I'm going to default to doing a random user. So as long as you sign up to play, you can potentially get this like $300 worth of software and a pretty sweet shirt. So that's kind of incentive just for signing up. Uh, in the game, there's a bunch of trophies. The trophies themselves are just SQL scripts that'll run and see what user won it. So I'm gonna give a, a, I'm gonna give a 9 one poster to anyone who wins these prizes here, assuming the same person doesn't win them all, which should be possible. If you want to know what these trophies actually are, then you can go in, take a look at the code, and see what it's actually looking for. It's just in the trophy table. Easy enough for you to select. Fun thing about, post, or about the game, if you wanted to add more trophies the way people could win, you can actually insert into the trophy table with your own code as well to, to make new ways. As far as what these kind of are, 
size matter is going to be basically the person with the greatest fleet. So it's a space game. The whole point is to build some plan or conquer planets, build up your resources by mining them, build more fleets, go out, conquer more planets, etc. So if you have the biggest number of ships, basically the largest count of your my ships table, then you're going to get that. The discoverer is the person who goes and actually finds the most planets and conquers the most planets, also known as Chris. <laughs> Greatest Empire is the person at the end of the game currently holding the most planets. And First Blood is an easy one. First Blood is going to be the first person to actually attack another person. Let me rephrase that. First Blood is the first person to attack something. Friendly fire does, is on. <laughs> and finally, I have another Postgres 9.2 t-shirt that I can give away to anyone who registers. So hopefully, I'm pretty excited about these prizes. So as far as the actual tournament details go, I've got some handouts up here that have basically the same information. The host for the tournament is pgcon.schemaverse.com. This, again, this tournament is played directly in a Postgres database. When you register, the account you use to register is a user on the Postgres database. So any client, any programming language you want, whatever you're familiar with, and how you work with Postgres every day, you can then use to play this game. If you'd like to write a, Perl, a, a little Perl program to go and connect and manage everything, you can do so. If you want to use pgadmin or psql to, to do your hacking around, there's no problem with that either. So basically anything that can touch Postgres can be used to play this game. So that's just the details up there. If at any point you, need an issue, you have an issue and you need to get a hold of me, uh, the game isn't perfect. There are certainly bugs here and there. Uh, or it's also not always explained well. You can see I've got a list of things. Uh, basically, type Schemaverse into something on the internet, and it's going to come to me eventually. Um, Google just stopped correcting you when you type Schemaverse. No longer says schema version. So that's <laughs> kind of my excitement. I added a word. So on to what the game actually is. To do this, I'm actually just going to go to the website and kind of, well, what I was going to do is just kind of open discussion about the game. Because that seems a lot more interesting most of the time than me standing up here and going over, over and over and over every single row or every single view, every single table, every single function that's available. They're all there online, especially if you want to go to this link up here. Schemaverse.com slash tutorial slash tutorial.php. That's on a public database right now. So if you just signed up here, that account won't work there. Um, but again, registration is always, there's a beautiful shirt that you can potentially win. Yeah, so this is for the what, second and third place winners get shirts? There's a number of people who can potentially get shirts. Okay. I don't know, we have prize with shirts, we got some posters. We got a copy of DevCat. Yeah. Um, for the first place winner, I've got, I don't have it with me now, but this great um, Schemaverse Champion hoodie. I'm pretty excited about the hoodie. hoodie. I'd like to see the hoodie. So, and we got pizza. And, and a signed poster signed by Tony that puts it Major Bell. So, as far as the actual game goes, the best way to look for a reference is to go to that tutorial link or just schemaverse.com and go to learn. And there's going to be a reference of every view, every table, and every function that you need to actually play the game. I'm not going to stand up here and list them. But I'll start giving you a little bit of kind of how-to on, on what's going on in the game. So the first thing you do when you join up in the game is you're given a, sorry, it's when you start, you're, you're given one planet. Each player has one planet. There's some planets that don't have anyone conquering it yet. But what you want to do is start building ships at that planet. So how do you build ships? Well, to manage your ships, there's a view called My Ships. So because this is SQL, in order to build a new ship, what you want to do is insert into My Ships. This will subtract money from your balance and then create that ship. 
There's some extra changes you can do based on what columns you pass through, so long as they fit into the rules. But generally, it can be that easy. The, the easiest way is just give it, give it um, insert into my ships name values with a name. So once you've done that, it's going to automatically build that ship. If you haven't given it a location, then it will use the location of any random planet you've conquered. Since it's the beginning of the game, you only have one planet, it's going to build that ship directly on that planet. You can only build ships on points where there's a planet that you're a conqueror of. So I can't just go build a ship beside Chris's planet and try and kill him early in the game. I have to actually build up on my planet and then use the move command to send my ships over there. But before you want to go start discovering others, first you need more resources. So as you create new ships by inserting, you can then use the mine command to tell, you, tell the system that you want that ship to mine that planet that it's currently on. Mining planets does two things. One, it gives you resources each tick. I guess that's another thing I should get to, but basic. Mining gives you resources, which you then need to build more ships, upgrade your ships, and then also including moving the ships, because you need fuel to move the ships. And it also does another thing. Mining conquers planets as well. So when you do go to discover new planets, in order to conquer it and call it your own, you have to mine it more than another player at that point in time. So those are the two key things of move. So the first thing you want to do after you've created your ship is start mining that planet. So there's a mine function, which just takes two arguments of a planet ID and a ship ID, other way around, ship ID and a planet ID. Or every ship also has state. So if I know that this ship is always going to be mining this planet, I can update the action column of the, on the My Ships table for that ship and the target to be that planet's ID number. If you want to see what planet you're actually on, there's a planet's view that lists all the details for everyone and who's currently conquering everything. And then you can just um, call that down by your own player ID based on the conqueror ID of that planet. So is this making any sense at all? Or how psychotic am I at this point? Really? And the tutorial is awful at giving you a reason why it's not working. But was that failing? Yeah, my cert expired. Give me a break. It's been busy. So, question. I mean, if I don't start this till midnight, Yeah, I want to say no, but the, like, the more likely answer is yes. However, if you log in right now, and over the course, well, not right now, the tournament hasn't started, over the course of the next 15 or so minutes, build up enough miners to steadily mine your home planet. That way your resources keep coming in, coming in. So long as you're protecting your home planet, then you'll likely keep it. So every planet has a couple of tributes. Every planet has a fuel amount that you can't see. It might run out. Your mining might just stop working at that planet. It, it's not likely to happen too soon in the game, though. It also has a mine limit. The mine limit is the amount of ships that can mine that planet each tick. So if a mine limit is 30, you can build 30 ships there that keep mining that one planet, and you'll likely always keep it conquered. The only way someone can beat you is by coming in and mining it maybe 16 times when you're trying to mine it 15 times. And then they've now conquered it over you, and they can build their ships there. So there, there is a way right now where you can, if you're not really ready to play until later, you can at least have your, script, or have your system start preparing for you, giving you resources, so when you do log in tonight, you've got all this money, and then you can go out and attack.
if you do happen to have some time right now to put into it, the best idea would be to start scripting something. Because no one wants to sit here for the next 24 hours and just type SQL command after SQL command. The game has something called fleet scripts in it. Basically, the system itself will run scripts that you write on your behalf each tick. I should really explain tick at this point. So the game is tick based. So every minute, approximately, is a new tick. Each ship can do one action per tick. So there's three kinds of actions. There's attack, there's repair, and then there's mine. So you can choose one of those to perform each tick. If you write a fleet script, the system will run that script on your behalf each time. So you don't have to sit there managing it. You can just write some little AI that will then go and build it up. So a simple one for your home mining planet would be check, or check to see what the mine limit is of the planet. Check to see how many ships I have on that location or around that location. If, it's le if the amount of ships I have is less, then build another ship and tell it to start mining. And then the next time you've got a bit more resources, and you say, okay, let's do this again, and do this again. So there, there's very simple, even like five, 10 line pieces of code you can start writing that'll start getting your resources. Another one, so there's also, so the my ships table, or view I should say, is for your own ships. If you wanna see when enemies are approaching, there's another table called ships in range. And that'll show you roughly what health they have, as well as where they are and what player they're from. I admit, there's a lot to it, but it's super addictive, actually. Once you start writing scripts and, kind of play and getting to know the system, then you start kind of tweaking here and there, and you're always watching stats. It's fun. Peter, you look like you've got a question or comment. Really? There is a sample script, and I was hoping to rewrite it before today, because it, it worked really well about six months ago. <laughs> now there's been a lot of changes to the game, unfortunately. I will, what I'll do is I'll try and fix it up quickly after this talk, and then I'll post it on my Twitter feed. So everyone who wants to go, you should be able to just copy and paste the script, and then you'll start playing. Or at least it will start playing for you. What's the error you're getting on the? And then you can't. Yeah, but it's saying login complete, and then you click something else. It just says. So it's. Yeah, it likes cookies and JavaScript and all sorts of stuff like that. So yeah, forgive me, this isn't actually like a real talk. Um, <laughs> I was just gonna go over some of the random stuff. If you'd like, I can stand up here and start playing the game, which is kind of, seems. It would be neat, probably neat to show off the, uh, the recent graphs. Yeah, actually, those are pretty cool. So there's been a bit of discussion lately about visualizing this game. So I created this game. I'm horrible. Hopefully there's nothing embarrassing in this. Um, I'm absolutely horrible at anything design. This is why I created a game in a database. Um, oh, that's a story. Yeah, there we go. But lately, some people are talking about actually still visualizing what's going on. And the results have been pretty cool. So this is the universe on the public server one day, and then this is the universe the next day. Each color is a different player. So you can kind of see how the different stra strategies that everyone has kind of shows in how well it's happening. Like purple just kind of takes over the right, and then orange gets a little bit eaten, and somehow yellow just kind of goes everywhere. <laughs> so there is, one needs web access. There's another one someone did a while ago. You cannot see that at all, I bet. And I don't have internet right now, so I can't show you that one. Uh, let's see here. It's 
Here, let, sure you let me tether to myself and then maybe show this. Is there? Yeah. But I just read this now and talked to my plan for Concord. This is the, yeah. Chris is kind of a jerk. <laughs> the tournament itself hasn't started yet, so right now it's just kind of like a little play area. Um, yeah, I will be resetting it after I finish yapping up here. So then it'll start and then we'll play. Um, and maybe Chris will be nice and give you like a 10 minute head start or something before he starts his script. He's looking like no. Someone was just telling me they were using interactive Lisp to play. And that seems awesome. I know another person who uses interactive Python to play. I think that's pretty fun, too. Here's the other graph someone created there. That's pretty cool. And, oh, the cool, the double cool thing is the ones with the red cross, the bright red crosses in the middle. Uh, th and these are generally on the edges of empires. Those are the places where conflict are taking place. So people are attacking people in all of those places. Yeah, that's pretty fun. Uh, but individual players won't have access to that global map. Uh, well, I can go talk to this guy. I, I don't know where he is. But it would be not difficult to get here because what's he using? I think he says somewhere. I like that. And then you just record the conquer actions, the conquer events are all listed. So you select all the conquer events. And you, can do, you could do, in effect, an, in principle, you could do an animated uh, diagram of this player conquered this planet on this turn. That is public information. So you can see how you're going to You would miss, if you, did, if you just used the you'd miss the original plan. But who cares about the first plan? Uh, well, but this has an animated... Scheme of this is working? Great. Is it RokuApp.com? Oh. 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 Yeah, it's visualizing the public game. Um, but, uh, yeah, it's just a web VL, all the stars, and the galaxy that everybody can put in and stop everyone on. There's uh, lots of stuff in there for adding planets for ships or things like that if you want to develop. So I'm going to try and use this, and hopefully I have more success than Peter is having. Yeah, this is, a, this is the public server. The one that you registered on my iPad is for pgcon.schemaverse.com. Um, it's not a website, but it's, just, it's the host of the database for the tournament. Um, this one is accessible all the time. Uh, the rounds last a week instead of two days, so it's a bit of a different competition at times. Yeah, that one, there's a server up and running. You can connect to it, but the actual tournament itself hasn't started. That'll be in about 20 minutes. pgcon.schemaverse.com. There's no, there's no online presence for that. I got lots of handouts. Excessive amounts of handouts. I killed too many trees. 
Okay, so how well can you see that? Not very well. Oh, that's not bad. Yeah, yeah. So let's do views. Okay, so as far as like what's actually going to be kind of interesting, even if you don't want to play, but you want to see what's going on, there's a bunch of stats tables that'll kind of give you uh, an interesting, like uh, current player stats, if you want to see who's winning, that one's going to give you a lot of information. Um, current player tick stats is just the stats from the tick that just happened. Um, so that's kind of more what just happened. Uh, that's better for gaining advantage, finding out who is suddenly winning. Um, my events is where everything in the game really gets logged to. If you create a ship, it's going to be logged there. If you conquer a planet, it's going to be logged there. If you upgrade your ship, it's going to be logged there. If you mine something, it's going to be logged there. The table grows extensively, fairly fast, um, but it's there. My fleets is where you write your fleet script. Uh, my player holds your player balance and your fuel amount, or your fuel reserve. It also holds another interesting piece of information that's called the error channel. I don't know if, you're, if everyone is familiar with uh, the listen notify system in Postgres. Because, you're, because the system is running scripts on your behalf, it needed a way of informing you if there's errors that are happening. So what the system will do is if you type listen and then type the name of your error channel, then every time you run a query, it's going to return any new error messages with the payload of that, of that query. So um, that, that secret number that each player has that's unique is found in your My Player table. Uh, your, My Player, your inventory, no one's actually created an item. So there's no inventory, really. If you want to create an item, though, there's an item table. Feel free to insert into it with whatever you want. I'm sorry. I, it's all done in cache in person. So if you want, if you want to just bring me some sort of SQL script in cache, then I'll get whatever you want in the system. Yeah, yeah. It, it's a thousand dollars for drop database schema verse. Uh, my query store is mostly just used for something else. Uh, it's there. It's the if, you, if you're on the, um, the Schemaverse website, there's a training wheel section, which is just like a nice little web interface where it gives you some helping functions and lets you run SQL within the browser. Um, that's what stores those. If you want to use it for storing something just for anything, it's there. It's kind of just a dumb store. Uh, my ships, again, it's where all your ships details are, your ship stats, your ship's um, current trajectory. Um, my ship's flight recorder is kind of a fun one, I assume, especially for visualization. I haven't seen anyone play with it, though. Um, but it basically maps the path of every single ship you have. Uh, that one also gets large. My trades, um, I have never seen a user use my trades. It's there. It probably took me the longest to code out of most things in the game. No one's ever used it, though. I'm sure it's super buggy. So if you want to find a way to break the game, start taking a look at trades. You may have to find a friend, or maybe you can trade with yourself. I don't remember. <laughs> online player is just going to show you who's online, um, which is basically what sessions are open on the database at the time. Planets, that's the view it holds, the detail for all planets. You can see all planets in the system at any time. You can see who's conquered them. You can't see how much fuel they have, but you can see um, their mine limit. So that's kind of like how big it is. Uh, planets and range is just going to show you don't use that actually. That's broken. <laughs> yeah. It's pulling from a cache and we stopped updating the cache because that was too intensive. And then I realized why are we making a cache when Postgres is pretty good at indexing. Um, so we, yeah, we, we stopped reinventing the wheel and I just haven't updated that view. Yeah. Ships and range is certainly important. Um, public variable, you can store variables um, as much as you want. 
Um, that's useful if you're doing scripting and you want to kind of keep track of what you're doing or keep track of what you're attacking next or stuff like that. Use it whatever you want. You can either store um, text or numeric values. So I don't really care. Uh, ships and range, again, that's the important one. Uh, we've optimized that a lot, so I think it's useful now. Like, I think you can actually run a query against it and it will return something. I love how the example I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Writing a game in SQL is hard, all right? <laughs> all right, all right. I'll that. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Absolutely. The game, uh, with that being said, the game is on GitHub. Oh, good. So if you want to learn anything about it or do something to it, it's there. All the code is there. Please enjoy. There's also that, that um, error channel thing I talked about. There's a Python script in there called Schemaverse Output Stream, SOS. And that will just log into the database and just keep, or keep pulling it to tell you if there's any new errors being listed. It's kind of a nice little Python script. Um, we get a, and then we, we got to let the other speaker in soon because he's got a setup. Oh, he's got to actually talk about something useful. Yeah. <laughs> well, he All right. To get yeah. Um, I'll just what's going to be useful? I'll quickly go over functions here. And then I'll leave, I swear. If you want to move your ships, you got to use something called ship course control. If that's too long for you, it's also you can use SCC. Uh, I would certainly suggest looking up how to do that on this website. Refuel. Uh, when you mine, it goes into your player's balance, and then you can distribute it to your ships with refuel. These are the three actions you can do. They're great. Use them. Convert resources converts your money to fuel or fuel to money. It's a one-to-one -one ratio. Don't ask me why they're different in the game at all. At one point, I had an idea of some sort of economy where every time you traded fuel, it changed the value of it, but you never trade money back to fuel. So that was stupid. Upgrade is how you upgrade your ships. And the rest are just a bunch of utilities that are there and super useful. This is all on the website for the tutorial. If you would like to come register, please find me. Also, please eat more pizza. We're going to move the pizza to registration. Yeah, I bet you are. <laughs> <laughs>